The award for best documentary feature at this year's Oscars went to My Octopus Teacher about the close relationship a man develops with an octopus. That got our own Jay Shevsky thinking about a cross-species encounter of his own just last fall. Here's Jay. This started like a lot of my favorite days, in a kayak on a quiet river. But soon, it would get a lot more interesting. I was alone on the Paw Paw River, paddling out of Benton Harbor, Michigan. Wait, what is on that log? Is that a praying mantis? I don't think I've ever seen a praying mantis in person. Is it turning its head to watch me pass? I must be imagining that. I've got to get a closer look, so I turn around and sidle up to the fallen tree that is the praying mantis's perch. And this time, no doubt about it, it turns its head to face me. It is watching me. This giant insect that must have been the inspiration for the classic cartoon alien is watching me. And it doesn't seem to be scared, at least not enough to fly away or walk away or whatever it would do. I'm a little scared, so before I get any closer, I Google, are praying mantises dangerous? And I learned that while they can be quite rough on their prey, they're harmless to humans. So I get in closer, hoping to get a few shots before I scare it off. But it doesn't seem scared at all. It seems curious. I know, I know, I shouldn't anthropomorphize this critter, but am I wrong to say that it seems every bit as interested in me as I am in it? Soon, I'm feeling ready to take our relationship to the next level. Will it read this gesture as a sign I can be trusted? Doesn't seem to make a difference. But then, after half an hour of just looking at each other, an amazing thing happens. It begins to approach, tentatively at first, and then with a little more swagger. I'm glad I already confirmed that it's not a threat to me, because it's coming aboard. And then, for another half hour, it explores me and my kayak. <laughs> this is totally wild. <laughs> There's a praying mantis on the bottom of my shoe that I can't, I can't even see it because it's on the bottom of my shoe. It makes itself quite at home on this new perch, and soon it's ready to make the move to my hand. That is the wildest thing. But now I am in be careful what you ask for territory. Because while I know that this thing won't hurt me, it's tough to keep my cool as it moves from my hand to my arm. Oh, that's getting a little creepy. Even though I get it back to more comfortable territory, this giant insect still wants to be better friends. And then, as it explores me, it manages to find the one place I can't film it, on my hand that is holding <laughs> my phone. <laughs> it, this is inches from my face, sitting on the phone that is taking this picture of me. It is magnificent. When have I ever spent this much time, this close, to a critter I encountered in the wild, and which I think has come to trust that I mean it no harm? Unfortunately, I betrayed that trust. 
And I'm sorry to say that the rest of the story happened off camera. Here are some photos from earlier as I tell you how it played out. The praying mantis spent several more minutes on my hand and then startled me by quickly walking up my arm toward my face. I instinctively flicked it off. It landed in the water where I watched it flail as the current carried it downstream. I was horrified, and I couldn't let my new friend drown, so I took off after it, eventually using the kayak paddle to gently scoop it out of the water. Then, somehow, with that same paddle, I made my way to the shore, and here is my stunned friend on the paddle, just before I returned it to safety, and then watched it quickly take off into the brush. Did I teach it that humans can't be trusted? Maybe that's not a bad lesson. And what did it teach me? Something pretty simple, really. The benefits of quiet, patient observation. For Chicago Tonight, this is Jay Shevsky. I don't know if I would have been that patient, but uh, Jay tells us he learned later that there are 2,400 species of mantis, or mantid, around the world. They come in a wild variety. A few other fun facts. Many species can turn their heads 180 degrees, ouch. The females have the charming habit of biting off the male's head after mating, double ouch. Those dark spots in their eyes move to follow their prey. Some cultures attribute supernatural powers to them, and it is not uncommon to keep mantids as pets. Perhaps Jay will go find one at a pet store. And we're all grateful to Luke Viador for allowing us to use those photos that you just saw.